Hello, and welcome back everyone. Today's video is gonna be quite interesting and fun, and as always, you're definitely gonna learn something new. This video is about MongoDB. First, we'll learn how to set up MongoDB, and then we'll cover the basics of MongoDB, how you can use it in your Discord bot. I've never made a proper tutorial on MongoDB before. I did create one video, but it's outdated now. Since there have been some changes in MongoDB, it was necessary to make this updated video. So let's go. First, open the MongoDB website using this URL. The link will also be available in the description. After that, simply log in if you already have an account. Otherwise, click on Try for Free and sign up. Once you're done, you'll see an interface that looks like this. After that, it will ask you a few questions, like how long you've been using it, which programming language you'll use, um, etc. Quickly fill this out and then click on Finish. So now, pay close attention here. It's asking you to create a cluster. You'll see three options, M10, Flex, and Free. We'll use the Free option, so select the Free option from here, then give your cluster a name. For example, you can name it after your bot or project. I'll leave it as it is because I'll delete it later. Next, you'll see three providers, AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. Choose whichever one you prefer. I'll stick with AWS. Then you'll see region options, but it's showing a recommended one, so I'll leave it as is. After that, scroll down and simply click on Create Deployment. Um, after this, it will take some time and word, and then it will show you. Here, you can see the username and password, which are very important, so you need to save them somewhere because we will use them to connect the bot. Now, click on Copy, and then click on New Database User to add it. After that, click on choose a connection method and it will show you the options. Click on the first one under drivers, then it will show you how to connect. It will also display the connection string here. It is currently processing and will display it in a little while. All right, so now you can see that it is showing you the connection string here, which is nice because it has been updated. MongoDB automatically adds the username and password but if it doesn't, you'll have to enter your username and password here, just like it is currently added. So now click here, copy it, and then click on Done. Now this interface is showing up, and I'll explain it to you, but before that, let's quickly set up our bot. So now I'm on my desktop. Here, I'll create a folder and name it Discord Bot. You can name it whatever you like. Then I'll right-click on it and open it with Visual Studio Code. This will open the folder in Visual Studio Code. Currently, there's nothing here. For a bot or any project, we first need a base that makes our development easier and keeps our project organized. For the Discord bot, we'll use DiscoBase, which is an advanced uh, Discord bot handler that organizes our project. Setting it up is very easy. Simply open the terminal and type npx create DiscoBase at latest and press enter. After that, it will ask you some questions. Since we've already created a folder, we'll leave it blank. Then it will ask if you want to install discord.js comma, to which we'll say yes, and also install MongoDB in Mongoose, since we'll be using MongoDB. After that, it will ask about the disco-based dashboard, and I'll choose no, but you can select yes if you want. Then press enter, and it's done. In just a few seconds, everything will be installed, and you'll see all the folders and files here. If you open config.json comma, you'll see options to add your bot's token, bot, ID, and many other things. If you go to the SRC folder, you'll find several folders, commands folder, where you'll create slash commands, messages folder, where you can create prefix commands for your bot, schemas folder, where we'll create mongoose schemas, functions folder, where all the functions will go, events folder, where all the events will go. However, this isn't a disco-based tutorial, so let's move forward. All right, now in config.json comma, We'll first add our bot token and bot ID. I'll quickly add them here. Next, you'll see MongoDB in the config. Here, we need to add the connection string that we copied from MongoDB earlier. I'll paste it here, and that's it. Now, reopen the terminal and type node dot and press enter. You can see how easily our bot is now online. Um, so we can now also see on Discord that our bot is online and showing as active. 
if you look at the terminal, it's also showing that MongoDB has connected successfully, which means our MongoDB is now connected to the bot. Now, let's learn some basics of MongoDB by creating an auto reaction system. For this, we'll create a slash command to set a channel where we'll save the server ID, channel ID, and the reaction emoji in the database. After that, we'll create a channel remove command to remove the channel from MongoDB. Then we'll check if the channel is set in MongoDB, and if a message is sent in that channel, the bot will automatically react to it. All right, to do this, we first need to define the schema structure to specify how we're going to save the data. Let me explain. First, uh, go to the schemas folder and I'll create a new file named autoreactschema.js. Now, in this file, we'll define a few things and build the structure. Um, let me explain to you. First, we need to define mongoose, which helps us in creating the schema. Then we create a variable. You can name it anything, but choose something that's easy to remember and makes sense to the system it, for the schema. After that, we use new mongoose.schema to create a new schema. Now let's start writing the fields we want to save. Hmm. The first thing we need to save is the gilded, so we know which server the system is set up in. For this, we write gilded. You can name it as you prefer. Then we specify the type, which can be integer, boolean, array, etc. In our case, we will use string. Additionally, we can define more attributes like required, whether the field is required, unique, whether the field should be unique, and default, a default value, if any. For now, we'll keep it simple and just make it required. True. Next, we need to save the channel id. So again, we define it as a string and required. True. The last thing we need to save is, it, is the emoji. This will also be a string and it should be required. True. That's it. This is, it, is our schema structure. If your system is bigger, like a ticket system, you may need to save more information such as category, embed title, description, image, and more, which you can easily do. But for now, this is all we need. After defining the schema, we simply export it so we can use it. To do this, we write module.exports equal sign mongoose model autoreact. The autoreact here represents the name of the collection in MongoDB. After that, we pass the variable we defined earlier. Make sure to save the file, and that's it. Now, if I go to the MongoDB website, you'll see the option to browse collections. If you don't see this option, make sure you've connected and refreshed the page. When I click Browse Collections, you'll see the data, which is currently just sample data. You can delete it by clicking drop. Since we haven't added any data yet, it's currently empty. Next, we'll create the command. To do this, we'll go back to Visual Studio Code and open the commands folder. Inside the community folder, I'll create a new file called autoreact.js. In this file, we'll write our command. The structure I'm using for the slash command might differ based on your bot's base or handler, but for now, I'm writing it according to disco base. Don't worry, the MongoDB part will stay the same. First, I'll define the slash command builder and embed builder. These will be used for the command. Then we'll define the schema we'll be using. To do this, we'll write const reactor schema equal sign require path to schema. This will point to the path where we've saved our schema file in the schemas folder. You can name the variable whatever you prefer. It's up to you. All right. So first, I will create a new slash command using module.exports. I'll name the command autoreact and also give it a good description. Then we'll create a subcommand named setup and provide a description for it as well. We will need an emoji, so we'll make a string option to get the uh, emoji from the user. After that, we need the channel where the autoreaction system will work, so I'll create that option too. This will only work for text channels, so we'll specify channel type, um, guild underscore text, to make sure it only shows the server's text channels. We will also create another subcommand for remove with a name and description. Then I'll use async execute and pass interaction to start writing the command logic. Now first we need to define some variables to save the information we'll use. We will create a subcommand variable to get the current subcommand using interaction.options.get subcommand Next, we'll get the gilded by creating a variable gilded and using interaction.gild.id. 
Then we need to check which command was run. So we'll use an if condition. If the subcommand is set up, we need to get the emoji and channel. So we'll use interaction.options.getString for the emoji and interaction.options.getChannel for the channel. Now, this is where we begin working with MongoDB. Up until now, everything I've explained has been about discord.js and JavaScript, which I didn't explain in detail because this video is not focused on that. However, if you need an advanced series on that, feel free to let me know. All right, so now let's check this. It will make the user experience much better and your bot will look great too. For example, according to this system, we can check if the system's already set up in the server or not. If it's not set up, we will set it up. Otherwise, we will show that it's already set up. So let me show you how it works. First, we create a variable const existing setup. Then we use await because we need to fetch data first before proceeding with the code. After that, uh, we use the variable we created with autoreactor schema dot find one in comma, and we pass gilded twice, once from the schema, and the second one is the variable we created. Find one is provided by MongoDB, and it helps us find data. There are other methods like find one and update, find one and delete, etc. So what this will do is it will search for the data with the gilded in the schema, and if it finds the data, it will save it to the existing setup variable. After that, we use an if condition. If existing setup has data, it means the setup is already there. And um, we simply show that auto reaction is already set up. Uh, if there is no data, the condition will be false and it won't run. Now, um, we use uh, try and catch. If we find that the server doesn't have the setup, we go ahead and use await auto reactor schema dot create. This time we use dot create to insert new data into the schema. So we pass the required values first, gilded and gilded, then channel.id and channelid, and finally the emoji. This will create new data, and then we can simply send a reply with an embed. In the catch block, you can handle the error message. All right, so here you can also handle the remove subcommand, and you need to try it yourself and add a comment once you've done it. I'll give you a bit of code to help. Here, you can use else if to check if the subcommand is remove. Okay, so first you need to check for the existing setup. If no setup is found, reply with auto reaction is not set up. After that, if a setup exists, delete it for that guild. You can use auto reactor schema dot de late one for deleting. Now try it yourself and let me know if you were able to do it. Now we start the bot, and by going to Discord, we run the slash auto react setup command to set it up. You can see that the setup is complete and our data must have been saved in MongoDB as well. If you want to check, go to the MongoDB website and you'll see that the gilded, channelid, and emoji are saved. But when I go to Discord and send a message in this channel, the bot is not reacting. And this is happening because we haven't written the code yet to detect when a message is sent and make the bot react to it. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code. Here we'll go to the events folder, create a new folder named reactor, and inside it, create a file called messagecreate.js. Then we'll write the code in this file. And as you can see, as soon as we created the file, the code automatically appeared. This is the power of Disco Base. Now, we'll define the event name and also define the reactor schema. Then we'll simply check for the existing setup. The message.guild.id will give us the guild ID where the message was created. Using this, we'll find the data from the schema. If the setup doesn't exist, we'll return to prevent the code from executing further. Otherwise, we'll simply do message.react, existing setup.emoji, and that's it. It's that easy. Now, I'll go to Discord, send a message, and you can see that as soon as I send a message, the bot reacts to it. Uh, so uh, I hope you liked today's uh, video. And if you face any issues, feel free to join my Discord server. Um, I also create custom Discord bots, dashboards, and commands. If you want to get one made, DM me on Discord. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, the 